This church, from the moment it was started until today, has shined with the miracles of the Blessed James. The sick have been restored to health in it. The blind have been rendered their eyesight. The tongues of the dumb have been untied. The ears of the deaf unplugged. The prayers of the faithful have been fulfilled, their wishes granted. The chains of sin have crumbled. Heaven has opened to those who knocked at its door. The afflicted have been given conciliation. And pilgrims from all parts of the world have rushed in in large masses, bringing in praise their gifts to the Lord and to St. James. Here begins the Pilgrim's Guide of the Apostle St. James. Chapter 1, The Roots of St. James. There are four roads leading to Santiago, which converge to form a single road in Spanish territory. The road that traverses St. Foy, the one that proceeds through St. Leonard, and the one that passes through St. Martin, join to form a single road that leads all pilgrims to Santiago de Compostela. There is on the road of St. James a very high mountain, which is called Port de Cis, because that is the gate of Spain. Here, pilgrims, falling on their knees and turning towards the land of St. James, offer a prayer. To him who climbs it, it seems as if he was able to touch the sky with his hand. bodies on this road. All those who go to Santiago must visit on the way the most dignified remains of the blessed Saint Gilles, the remains of the blessed martyrs Tiberius, Modestus, and Florence, and the paladins of Charlemagne, who lie together in a single grave from which a soft scent emanates that heals the sick. In Spain, one ought to visit the remains of the blessed martyrs Fogundo and Primitivo, and Domingo, the confessor who paved the road between Najara and Redesilla, and the venerable remains of the blessed Isidore. May the saints assist us with their virtues and prayers. These are the towns that are located on the road to Santiago after the Samport Pass. Having climbed over the summit of the mountain, there is the hospice of Santa Cristina, then Canfranc, and then Haka. I heard a story. A band of pilgrims to Santiago once lost their way in a wild and mountainous country. 
When they saw in the darkness the Virgin seated on a throne, with her staff she lit the pilgrim's way. So, as a star directs the sailor, Saint Mary is the pilgrim's true guide. After this lies the land of the Navarrese, which abounds in bread, wine, and livestock. At Puente la Arena, a healthy river issues called the Runa. But beware of drinking the waters of the Rio Salado, for they are deadly. The story is told of two valiant pilgrims who arrived in a city destitute of all. For long hours they paced its streets, asking for lodging, for the love of God and St. James, and yet no one would receive them. Finally, weakened by hunger and exhaustion, they were lodged by a very poor man. That very night, by the effects of divine vengeance, a violent fire burned the entire street to the ground. But the house in which the pilgrims had been lodged remained, by divine grace, untouched. That is the reason why it should be known that the servants of St. James, whether poor or rich, have the right to hospitality and to diligent respect. After having traversed the forest of Oca in the direction of Burgos, Castilla and Campos follow. This country is full of treasures. Follow the road to Tardahoz, Hornillos, Castojeri, and Fromista. In the city of Leon, one ought to pay a visit to the venerable remains of the blessed Isidore, who infused the Spanish nation with his doctrines and decorated the entire holy church with the flower of his writings.
How a Dead Man Came to Santiago. A group of pilgrims vowed to stand by each other on the dangerous journey to Santiago. But one man grew sick and was abandoned on a mountainside by all but one of his companions. He died in the arms of his friend, far from the goal of their holy pilgrimage. But then a miracle occurred. St. James appeared on a radiant white horse. He bore the two pilgrims, the living and the dead, to the city of Santiago, and all rejoiced at their soul's salvation. On the south portal of the Apostolic Basilica, there are two entrances. To the left, the temptation of the Lord is sculpted. Before the Lord, there stand some repellent angels looking like monsters, who display before him the kingdoms of the world, feigning to hand them over to him, if on his knees he would adore them. May that never happen. All told, the whole wall is adorned with men, saints, beasts, birds, and fishes, and more works than I can describe here in detail. In the Basilica of the Blessed James, one cannot find a single crack or defect. It is admirable built, large, spacious, luminous, he who walks through the aisles of the gallery above, if he ascended in a sad humor, will leave happy and contented. Blessed James, 
It is divinely lit by paradisical jewels, incessantly honored with immaculate and soft perfumes, decorated with dazzling celestial candles, and diligently worshipped by attentive angels.